Good morning again. Good morning, good morning. Today is a very special day in many different arenas for sure. Um, we're continuing the He's Alive Now What? Jesus um, was resurrected, was on this planet for 40 days extra, and then he went to be with the Father. So today, He's Alive Now What? And here it is. God has a plan and it involves you. Everybody say me. Okay, God has a plan and it involves you. And, and I want you to understand something. Um, he wants to use you where you are. And, and quickly, I remember when we were going through the lead team um, um, interviews and, and there was uh, 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 one of the people that are interviewing, she's a cheerleader at Tarleton, she said this, she said, um, God has um, reminded me through my mom that I am to, is it bloom where I'm planted? What's up? Grow where I'm planted. And there's so much truth in that. Many times we want to be there or here or all over the place, but God has planted you, bloom and flower where you are. And so today we're doing something that we probably has never been done here. It's called an ordination service. And you're like, oh, that sounds like fun. Let's set the clock for snooze, all right, in 30 minutes. And it's the ordination this is what it is. The ordination service is the, is the recognition is saying, hey, we have somebody with us on staff that, that has a calling on his life and, and is purposefully um, pursuing that calling in the full-time ministry. And so um, that person is Jared Osmotherly. So if y'all want to give it up to him. Um, and and literally, guys, I can close my eyes and go back to Trinity Bible Church several years ago um, when, when I was ordained. And, and what I'm going to do in just a quick, quick segment is to tell you quickly what it is. Being ordained does not mean that you're extra special or you're closer to God, all right? It means that there is a recognition and a calling. We all have a calling. But in this, Paul in the Bible talks about, hey, he is not only working with churches and, and building up, and these other men will come along and share these things. At the same time, there is a significant calling on his life to do in Ephesians 4. Everyone say Ephesians 4. Okay, you've got to cover that now, okay? So I've, I've put that out there. But I want to look at this quickly. Because I think sometimes when we recognize one person, we begin to set ourselves in comparison to them, and that's not it. 1 Corinthians 12, 19 through 22, but our bodies have many parts, and God has put each just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. We need one another here. We need you. Um, not, just to, not just to show up, but to continue to live out your calling. And, and specifically to Jared this morning, I want to bring this out because verse 22 is so powerful. 1 Corinthians 12 is about the body of Christ. And, and verse 22 is so good. Look at this. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And what I mean by that, you know what? This part is, is, a, is a part of the body, but it's not the most important part. Jared, when he comes up in a little while, he is a part, but not the most important part. There are parts that function within this body every day that are significant, are very important. And so we do not want to think just because we have pastor or something attached to us that we're better. There's an accountability which we'll get to, but there's no way better. Acts 13, 2 through 3, we were reminded that this, one day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and set them their way. There is significance in the idea of them recognizing Saul and Barnabas to go, a specific calling. And, and my friend Jared has a specific calling over his life. 1 Peter 5, 2 through 3 reminds us what he's called to do, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly. 
Can, can I just be completely transparent with this for a second? Um, Cody and I had an exchange before service that it wasn't in the best of ways. And I was completely wrong. And so what I did during the worship service is we went and talked and got it right. And the reason I even say that is because anytime you think Jared or you think myself or anyone else on staff has it together and perfect, that's not it. We're all broken parts of the body. And it's good to remember that. Look at this. Because you're eager to serve God, don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. Jared, where are you at? Oh, there you are. Hi. You're, you're dressed up. You look so nice. Um, um, now, here's this thing, too. This is really cool. 1 Timothy 5.22. 1 Timothy 5.22 says this. Never be in a hurry about appointing a church leader. Look at this. Do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. So what we're doing now, um, I am going to ask definitely one of his friends, Jim, to come up. And it's important to understand that it's just not me. We've got to take a look back in Jared's life to share about all the things where he's coming from. So my friend, um, now then, we know each other for sure, has come up. How far did y'all drive? A long way. A long way. Right. Can I use the microphone stand? Uh, sure. Can we switch uh, colors uh, and uh, yeah, use a different absolutely. microphone? You need to do. You want a mic stand? I'd like my hands free. Okay, I'll get you a mic stand. You keep There's one right there. Yeah, I, I scoped I it. it out. You just, you just and I got this. Perfect. All right. Good morning, Timber Ridge Church. Yeah. Um, I used to be a children's minister, and I'm used to getting a lot of feedback. Good morning, Timber Ridge Church. All right. Thank you. And I come from Missouri, uh, the Joplin area, and I'm part of a church there, Christ Church of Orinogo. Orinogo. He has you, like, repeat things. Say that. It's a mouthful. Orinogo. Thanks for playing along. I like you guys. I like this family. I feel like, you know, Christ Church of Orinoco, it's like a family. It's our family. And you get to know your brothers and sisters really well because you spend time with them week after week after week. And I can tell there's like a family here. Do you love being a part of this church family? Is God doing things in this church and through this church? He's making a difference. And are you here this morning because he's making a difference in your life? Is this the place where you heard God's call for you to become a part of his family? That's good news, isn't it? That's good news. So there's this calling that God calls us to be a part of his family. And when you're a part of a family, well, there's different roles within that family. So I don't know about you. Have you ever been in the car like right after church and it's like, where do you want to eat? I don't know. Where do you want to eat? No, I don't know. Where do you want to eat? Isn't it good when there's somebody that has that role and says, this is where we're going to eat. This is where we're going to go. Hey, we have the weekend free. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are... Isn't it good when there's somebody that takes that responsibility and says, this is where we're going to go. This is what we're going to do. It can be helpful when roles are defined. It can help people get from one place to, an, uh, to another. This is like the first time that most everybody's ever met me. And I might cry because I get to talk about things that I love this morning. I get to talk about God. I get to talk about friends. Yeah, love them both. So we'll get through this together, right? We're not alone. We're not alone. He is with us. So I'm Jim. I'm from uh, Christ Church of Ornogo and um, moved there almost a quarter of a century. I know I don't look that old, but... Um, but moved there in 2000, and I was the children's minister there. And I uh, got to work with the kids for like 15 years. And then I switched into this role of, uh, of pastoral care and coming alongside people when they're going through difficult times and helping train other people to be in, involved in that. Well, I got to know Jared and his family because the, they moved to, the, to that area. And faithfully, week after week after week, Jared showed up to drop off his kids and I felt like God had sent some reinforcements that I needed. You see, I live in Missouri. 
Uh, Kansas City, Missouri is there, and guess who they root for? Yeah, they root for the Chiefs. And so I've, I'm surrounded by all these people that, that are part of Chiefs' kingdom, and I felt like outnumbered because I'm not a Chiefs fan. I'm a Broncos fan. <laughs> but God is faithful, and he sent reinforcements in the, in the form of Jared, who is also a Broncos fan. And we rooted for the same team, and so there's kind of like this connection. And so I kind of knew Jared, and he's kind of, he was kind of quiet, and, and, but he was faithful, and we had that in common. But there was a life-changing event, and, um, and before I talk about like just Jared's life, I do want to share a scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, just to keep us like on track. I love how the songs, what did we sing about today? We sang about God and what God is doing and has done for us. It is him and him alone. So in 1 Corinthians, it talks about different roles. And Paul reminds the church in Corinthians, in Corinth, in chapter 3, he says this, What after all is Apollos? What after all is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned each his task. I planted, Apollos watered, it is, but it is God who has been making it grow. God does good, through, good things. We get the good. I'm going to borrow this from Lou Giglio. We get the good. God gets the glory. We're going to talk a lot about some people today, a person today. I'm going to talk about some people that have done some planting and some people that have done some watering. And how it didn't stop with that planting and, and, and watering, but how that has gone on to that person being planting and watering and giving that to others. But each time we talk about a person who needs to get the glory, God gets the glory. If we're going to repeat something this morning, who gets the morning? The, who gets the glory this morning? And you say, God gets the glory. Who gets the glory this morning? Amen, because God wants to work in our life. God is working in our life, and he has a story for each of us. And we get to celebrate what God is doing in the story of Jared. But let it be an inspiration to what God is doing and wants to do in each and every family member here. As we get to celebrate what God is doing in this family member, you know when it's a birthday party? Everybody gets cake, and cake is good. Everybody gets ice cream, and ice cream is good. Everybody here, we get to be a part of a blessing of making this memorable day that will be memorable for Jared for the rest of his life. But we want this to be memorable to, to Timber Ridge Church. He is part of you, and he is being set apart to have an impact here because of his willingness to do what God wants him to do, what God wants him to do. Why? Because it's God that gets the glory. We get the good. And I think there's lots of good things still in store because of Jared stepping into this. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be preaching this morning. But, but let me share some, some other things as we step into this. Because, like, if, if Jared's putting himself in this role, like in a family, you know, somebody that's willing to take on responsibility. A lot of times they say or give a title to somebody that's willing to take on responsibility, a leader or a servant leader. Paul goes on and he describes, if we're going to have somebody that's going to lead, that's going to be a servant leader, here's a description. Watch for this in these people. Take time to examine their life. That as they follow Jesus, are they looking more and more like Jesus? That as we uh, become less, is more of Jesus being seen in their life? Who gets the glory when people see Jesus in our life? God does. So let our life be that reflection and bring in the attention back to, to God. So in first, uh, in first Timothy, and also he gives these same instructions to Titus, because they have that role of, you know, who are the people that are called to to this special responsibility for the good of the family. This is what Paul reminds us of. And tell me who, it's not just describing a person, but what does this person's characteristics, 
Who does it point back to? I'm just going to, I'm just going to, do you see Jesus when I read these words? Does this describe somebody that looks like Jesus because there's, they've been spending time with Jesus and following Jesus? In 1 Timothy chapter 3, here is a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Now, the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy, full of respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's family? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment of the, as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders, so that he will not fall into the disgrace and into the devil's trap. Then he goes on to tell about not just the, the overseers, but the, the servant leaders, the, the, the deacons. And in the same way, deacons are to be trustworthy and worthy of respect, sincere, not in, indulging in much wine, not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested, and then if they, there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be faithful to his wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those, are, those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ. So as a person spends time with Jesus and they reflect more and more of his his characteristics and qualities, that honesty, that truth that they stand upon, uh, the, the things that become most important to them, that money's not the most important thing in their life because there's not room for that because Jesus is at the center of their life. Who do they reflect? Jesus. Well, I'm so thankful for how Jesus is reflected in Jared's life. Like I said, I got to know Jared as a Bronco fan and rooting for the same team. But I've grown to love uh, Jared so much because of not the, the football team, but because of the, the team and the family that we are a part of, God's team, followers of Jesus. And just being, a, being able to be a part of like a transforming event, a transforming moment in his life. I knew Jared before, men's encounter, but what a blessing to see what took place that weekend when we gathered uh, to hear the teaching and, the, and, the, and, the, and having time to reflect at that retreat. You didn't leave that as the same person, did you, Jared? But it was so much more than a weekend that had a huge impact on his life. It wasn't just a weekend where he made like these really important connections with other men that could be a part of his life and encouraging him and going side by side with him and teaching him, but how he showed up week after week for the post-encounter teaching. But it didn't end there, how he... He was just faithful and kept showing up fat. Do you remember what fat means? Faithful, available, teachable. Do we have anybody that's fat here? Faithful, available, teacher, teachable. Jared, faithful, available, teachable, showing up for school of discipleship. But he wasn't just a container taking all of these things in. As Paul David Tripp would say, you know, it's one thing, and it's a good thing to be a container and not to forget and to lose those things. It's another thing to be a conduit. Doesn't God call us to not just take in what he's giving us, but for that to overflow and to flow into other people's lives? And that is exactly... That's why we're here. Because he hasn't kept it to himself. He is so eager to serve and to share with other people. He's gotten the good, and he wants other people to have the good. And so, um, taking advantage of opportunities to be able to serve other people, being a, a part of like our one another ministry, where people are going through a tough time, they lose their driver's license and need help being able to get to work, guess who showed up? Jared, giving Stephen a ride 
And when you have windshield time, you have a chance to be an influence. And I ran into Stephen at Walmart one time, and he said, you know what? I don't know if I ever told Jared thank you for that. But I'm so thankful that he was there for me. Small thing, driving somebody where they needed to be. Yeah, but isn't that what Jesus does? He shows up when they're needed. What about a lady going through a horrible divorce? Messy, messy divorce. With the sheriff's department like on hold, knowing that they might need to show up. Who's there to help with that messy situation? Jared and a bunch of other people to help navigate that. Making a difference in his life. Our church decided to do a church plant within our church by starting a Thursday night service. And so they gathered a group of people to be a part of the core team. Who was there saying, yeah, sign me up for that. I don't want to just be a container. I want to be a conduit. And being a part of that, that core team for our Thursday night service. Man, I'm so glad that as uh, you were growing in Jesus that you let that overflow and flow into other people's lives. And it didn't stop when you guys moved. <laughs> when he came here, he's not a stranger. When, when, you, when you said that today was about Jared, I heard a lot of people cheering. You know this brother, don't you? You know his heart. You know what he's done for your kids. You know what he's done for the bacon, not bacon sausage, for the men's breakfast. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes it just takes somebody saying, this is where we're going to go eat so that something important can happen. You could tell the stories about what you've seen God doing in Jared's life since he showed up here. That he's continued to be that conduit. And he's putting himself in a position so that more good can come through his life to bless other people. When your life is done, wouldn't you love to say, wouldn't you love people talking about you and saying, yeah, God flowed through that person's life. God flowed through your life. So I'm just, that, that is like one of my prayers for today, that we might be bringing a lot of attention to some waterers and some planners. But allow that to be an inspiration to you right there, right where you're sitting today. God's story in your life. How is he? How is he having like those big events in your life and calling you to a new place? Who are those really important people that are planting and watering in your life that are just making a difference in your life? List them. Who are they? If you have that list, you know what God's doing in your life. You're not in this alone. And would they drive all the way from Missouri? <laughs> When you have God's people in your life, they show up no matter how far away it is. I'm almost done. Just because I turned the page doesn't mean there's a, I'm only halfway. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to land this. Yeah, moving here wasn't the end. It's open doors for new opportunities for God to continue to work in his life and and for good things to continue to come into his life and out of his life for others. He stayed connected to God and God's word. He stayed connected to people and not trying to do all of this on his own. And, he, and he's just stayed connected to just that burning of growing and pursuing God and what God has for him. Did I mention that he like started taking classes there when he was still in, in uh, Joplin so that he could learn and grow so he had more to give to others? He's still learning, he's still growing, and he's still so eager to serve other people. He's connected to serving and opportunities. So maybe you don't know Jared, but today you do. Maybe you're going, I want some of that. I know where I'm at, and I feel like I'm stuck. I don't want to be stuck. I want to grow. I want to move forward. I want the end of my life and the story that's told at the end of my life to be that of a conduit where God showed up and threw me over and over and over again. Well, it's pretty important to know who to call, who to talk to, who to reach out to. Because when you have somebody in front of you, a leader, what can they do? They can show you the steps. They have that example. They have those experiences. And whether they're good experiences or bad experiences, 
So if you're here, somebody today that doesn't know Jared, introduce yourself and see where he can um, share experiences with you. So I get to share uh, somebody else that's a part of Jared's life. Really big part of Jared's life. One of those, like, cord brothers that's been there over and over and, and uh, been able to invest in him, but uh, also to be, you know, when you, when you have a brother, that camaraderie and how they influence your life. So I'd just like to call up one of um, Jared's uh, friends and brother uh, as he has a charge and a challenge to issue to Jared. Chad? Chad, my friend. <laughs> Please come up. All right. Good morning, church. Um, to get this out of the way real quick, <laughs> Broncos fan, yeah, I'm a Chiefs fan. I know Cowboys, I like Cowboys. But it just goes to show God can use uh, anybody to glorify him. Okay, and I have a... I need to do uh, Ephesians 4. But before I do that, I want to just want to say Jared, about Jared and I, we went through the encounter weekend, and um, I really connected with Jared. We connected. And it hurt when he left, but I knew, I see God know, always knows what he's doing. And uh, I'm very proud of, you, proud of you, Jared. So thank you for saying yes. God, um, Isaiah tells us in Isaiah 6 about uh, who shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. So, Jared, thank you for saying yes and going. Um, we do, I, I heard something the other day that really stuck out with me is um, get rooted get growing, and get going. So God always has a, has a plan for us. And uh, sometimes all we have to do is just say yes. So Ephesians 4. Um, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people and to do, and to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. If you're a Christian, you're part of the body, and we all, all of us are ordained to do his work, produce fruit. And, um, yeah, I mean, he calls some of us to be preachers, teachers, but if you're a Christian, you are part of the body, the big C, big church. We're all one big family. We all are part of the body. Uh, and as the church grows bigger, we need to grow smaller. So, I mean, you can go in and out. You know, I used to do that. You go in and out. I didn't really want to talk to anybody. I'm kind of a introvert so I'm fine by myself but uh, the only way to connect is through small groups that I found and uh, that's how I connected with Jared we he loves Jesus and uh, so do I so in Hebrews Hebrews 10 24 and 25 it tells us let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. So just, it's all about today, you know, and get connected in a small group. You got some good people around here, I can tell. Um... I just uh, kind of overwhelmed. I'm just, uh, Jared, I just, that's what we were talking about. Uh, God does do the growth. We, 
plant the seeds, someone else may come and water it, but God is, in the one, is the one that does the growth. He knows all hearts. He knows exactly what everyone needs, what you need. I don't know where you are in your walk, if you even know Jesus, if you have a relationship with him. But today's the day. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's the most important decision you ever make in your life and the best decision. And he loves you. John 15, 16 through 17 tells us, you did not choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. Really, that's, I mean, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. That sums it all up right there. Um, Acts twenty twenty eight to Jared. Guard yourself and guard God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church. Purchase with his own blood, which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as a leader. This is, uh, John talked about this earlier. It's not like a, it's going, to be, it's going to be a challenge. You know that. You already know that ministry is a challenge. There's sometimes you're very lonely. Um, but God is faithful even when we're faithless, and he's always with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. So I'll end with this. It's 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 5. Preach the word of God. Be prepared in season and out of season. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For time's coming when people no longer will listen to sound doctrine, but following their own desires will look for teachers who want to tickle their ears. So we live in a day where we need some good teachers and preachers, Jared, and uh, I'm just so thankful that you said yes. Okay, I, I think at this point, um, Jared, you've had some people in your life that want to say something special to you. Can you go ahead and play that video? Hey, Jared. We just wanted to say congratulations on your ordination. Um, we love you. We're so proud of you. And we know God has great plans for your life. And we wish you the best. Love you. All right, congratulations. Hey, bro, congratulations on your ordination. I'm really proud of you. I'm really proud to call you my big brother. I'm looking forward to see what God has for you for many years to come. Love you. Congratulations, Jared. We are so proud of you. Dios te bendiga. Congratulations to you and I love your family and we love you all and just pray that you have a good life, honey, in your life. We love you. Bye bye. All right. Now then, Jared, go ahead and come up, please. Um, it's your turn to. That was a sneaky move, Jason, including grandparents, right? That was I mean, a sneaky move. That was sneaky. But I thought it'd be good to play before you came up here. So. Yeah, so I'd cry. Yes. You know, I've seen so many grown men cry in one day, man. Um, wow, I'm overwhelmed right now uh, just with family that came, friends, videos, um, just the life that I grew up in. I just want to thank my parents for raising me up to love Jesus. Um, I mean, you guys did awesome, and, you know, it took me a while to figure figure him out, but it was a good foundation, so I want to thank you. It's my mom's birthday, too. Happy birthday. But, 
My twin, my twin brother's here again, too. My twin brother's here again. Uh, he was here last time, but uh, also Sam, I just want to thank you for just walking beside me this entire time. And Man, we grew up together, and uh, having Jesus in the center has really saved a lot. So, and my kids, thank you. Uh, I just hope you grow up loving Jesus and spreading his word, but um, just a little bit about me and just the journey I took. Uh, yeah, just growing up in the Christian home, but when I got to Christ Church Orinogo um, and did that men's encounter, it was like I told my mom as a kid I wanted to be a pastor as a kid. I don't know if I told her that to just impress her or what, but somehow it kind of stuck. Stuck. So, uh, But yeah, um, going there and just seeing at at Orinogo, like, what the church is and why why we're a part of it has made a big impact on me. But I came here to Timber Ridge Church. I got plugged into a life group really quick. Um, we knew if we didn't, we'd probably fade into the faces and uh, just try to do things on our own. But I got into the Garza's life group. They asked me if I'd like to help in kids' men. Um, I was taking classes to do biblical studies, and I was all like, I don't want to teach kids at all. So <laughs> I, think, I think Cody was talking about Jonah and the Ninevites. Um, so I was trying to run away from the Ninevites. I was trying to run away from God's plan, and sometimes kids can be like Ninevites. They're, sc- <laughs> they're a scary crew, so if you haven't read Jonah, get in there. But uh, no, I fell in love with it, like... It took me a little bit. I got the internship here uh, with kids, and, like, I just fell in love with the kids and how we can teach them, and, like, the people who team up with me in uh, Kids Men. I just, I love relationships, and I love, I, I used to hate it. I used to be a loner. I wanted to do it on my own, but, like, gathering with people is, is it's really cool now, so I've changed a little bit, but... I wanted to share. Um, I wanted to share in Matthew chapter 22. I was thinking John was all like, "Okay, you're going to talk a little bit at the end," and uh, I was thinking the other night. I was like, "What do I talk about? Like, do I talk about how? I, I don't know what I was wanting to talk about." But I got to um, John chapter 22. It's actually Jesus talking to a crowd. He he asked these Pharisees and scribes some questions. And um, they didn't know how to answer this last question. But he says to the crowd, but let's see. Let's me, let me get there. Whoop. All right. Okay. Then Jesus said to the crowds, it's chapter 23, verse 1 through 12. He said to the crowds and his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat so do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do, for they preach but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear, and they lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love to place They love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplace and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. I just want to tell you that. I don't want to be just like John said. It's, this is special, but I'm not special. As, I mean, I'm not more special than anybody here. And if you see me where I'm like, all right, I'm in the place of honor, I'm cool, kick me in the butt. Because... <laughs> I want, I want you guys to be transparent with me, and I want to be transparent with you guys. And I just want to love you guys, 
And I want to teach you Jesus because that's who we are here for today, not, not me. It's, it's to glorify God. And, and Jesus is the one true way. And I hope, I mean, it's, it's a great family that we, we live in here. Thank you for checking out Timber Ridge Church here on YouTube. If you would like to see a previous message, click here. If you would like to stay up to date with all things TRC, subscribe here.